Hello world, today I'm going to give a demonstration of my ASP.NET website that manages an airline flight database and allows users to book flights and reservations. Okay, we'll start here at the login page. We'll just log in as an administrative user. Let's try this one more time. And we're logged in as an administrator. Administrators have access to certain pages that regular users don't have access to. These pages access the database. All right, so here is our users database, a table of users here. Uh, all sorts of information about them, the ID, names, last names, usernames, passwords, encrypted passwords at that, etc., etc. Also, we have whether or not they are administrators for the database and the date created and date modified timestamps okay we will create a user and just to keep this simple we'll just call the user the letter C C all the way across the board notice our password is covered with the bullets we'll just try C there for the zip see what it says okay so we get an error message right but it didn't delete everything Please type strings for strings and numbers for numbers. Input was not in the correct format. The problem here was with the zip code. Let's type just type in some numbers here for a zip code. Then we'll submit that. And notice our user C was saved and it appears here on the database. Okay, let's change the password. Let's say we want a different password for C. Let's say C forgot his password. Now we gotta give him a new one. So we're going to take all this out of here and we're just going to type in plain text. We'll just call it password. Just something simple. Okay, and then we update. Notice we got a new encrypted password here. Great, so we'll go to the airlines page. We can edit the airlines that we have in the database. We have four listed here already. We're going to create an airline. We'll just call it P for now. And Notice each airline has a logo. We can upload logo files to the website to use for the airlines. This one, let's see here, let's go to pictures. We we'll use Pan Am. Use Pan Am's logo. Because we don't have Pan Am's logo in here, I don't think. Let's check. Okay, this is our folder we're uploading to. Notice Pan Am's logo is not in here yet. Okay, we're going to click this upload. All right, information about it, where we got it, or where we uploaded it to, the logo itself, and notice in our folder here, Pan Am's logo is present. Great. Now let's just submit this and create our new airline. There we have it. There's our new airline right there. Now let's change the name. We can edit this. We don't want to call this P. We'll call this Pan Am Airlines. Let's see if we cancel out of that. Let's cancel out of that. It just goes back to the way it was. So let's try this one more time. Pan Am Airlines. This time we'll update. And notice we have a new name for it. And this airline goes out of business. There's a big merger. So what are we going to do? We're going to delete it. So we click on this right here. And it's gone. Next, let's go to our flights page. Just like the other pages we've seen we have a table listing our flights and also some text fields down here where we enter the information for new flights that we're creating this one is different because we can select the flights for specific airlines in American there are no records in the, in the flight table for American Airlines we'll leave it like that for a demonstration for something else later We'll select that one. Delta. All right, we're going to create a new flight for Delta. This is going to be flight number 800. We have, let's say, we have 12 seats available. Departure City, Kansas City, Missouri. Destination City. We'll go to San Francisco, California. Departure time, we're going to leave at 
pardon me, 4 p.m. and it will arrive there at, let's see here, how about 7 p.m. We'll submit that. Flight 800, we'll go back to Delta, select it, and there's Flight 800 for Delta Airlines. And just like the other ones, we can edit it. So let's say, no, we don't want it at 4 o'clock. Now it's going to push it back to about 4.15. Makes our arrival time 15 minutes later. 15 also. And we can update it just like we did the other ones. And there you have it. New departure and arrival times for the flight. Okay. This is all great for administrators, but what about new users who want to buy tickets for their flights? Well, we're going to go here to, let's see here, go to our registration page. And we're going to set up a new user account. Let's see, this new user, we don't want them in our database here. Let's see, this is our table of users. Oh, notice we got our C here, guy that we created earlier. We're going to create another one. We'll call this guy D. D all the way across the board until we get to the zip code, of course. One, two, three, four, five. We'll submit that. User D is saved. How's our database looking? D is in there. Great. With our encrypted password. Now let's log in as D. D, D. You logged in successfully. We'll go here to the reservations page. Oh, yeah, reservations. So we're going to just select an airline. I'll show you all the airlines here. Continental, there's the logo and the flights available for it. Qantas also, logos for each of them. Now remember, American Airlines didn't have any flight saved for it. And that shows up here. There are no flights available for American Airlines. All right. Well, let's say we want to book a flight with Qantas. We'll select the airline. All right. Which one do we want to go to? Okay. How about Flight 32 flying from Springfield to Springfield, funny enough. There are 104 seats available here. All right. Let's say we just want one ticket, and we'll say, oh, we get to pick our seats. Let's say we want to sit in A1, and let's say... We also want to hog up A2, but not pay for another ticket, right? All right, it complains at us. The number of seats does not match the quantity of seats you're trying to reserve. All right, all right, all right, fine. So now let's try something else. We got 104 seats available. Let's go to 105 seats. Say, I want 105 seats. There are not enough seats available to process your reservation. Okay, fine. I will only do one seat then. Reservation saved, and our reservation appears up here in this table. That concludes the demonstration. Thank you for watching.